Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hands and for this video we're going to be having a look at the three Quatermass experiment movies. Three exquisitely good sci-fi horror movies from the 1950s and 60s. Low-key the inspiration for anything remotely science fiction that came after these movies. And three movies that I've wanted to cover on the channel for quite a while so this should be a fun one. Let's get straight into it. So the original Quatermass Experiment was a British TV serial created by Nigel Neal in 1953 and told the story of a British space programme that sent three astronauts up into space. But on their return, only one astronaut came back and upon investigation, it was found that an alien being had got itself on the spacecraft and was now threatening planet Earth. And Professor Quatermass is sent in to deal with the case and stop the alien threat. Originally released as six half an hour episodes, most of which are missing now, the series was a great success and even went on to be the inspiration for things like Doctor Who and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now due to this success, the rights to the Quatermass experiment were quickly bought by none other than Hammer Horror, who produced their own film adaptation in 1955, The Quatermass Experiment. This one had the X highlighted to capitalise on the fact that this was more of an X-rated and, and darker version of that original British TV series. Now, Hammer Horror's version of The Quatermass Experiment starred American actor Brian Don Levy as Professor Quatermass. A casting choice that creator Nigel Neal was not happy with. He actually considered Brian Don Levy to be a washed up actor at this point and was concerned that he was only taking the role to cash the paycheck. But I've got to say, I really love Brian Don Levy's portrayal of the character. I think he does a great job and he works really well along all kind of the British actors and just the general Britishness of this film. And that's one of the things I really love about the Quatermass experiment. This was from a time where over in America there were lots and lots of really great science fiction, atomic age kind of movies that were really fun to watch and had a very kind of Americana feel to them, which worked very well for those movies. The Quatermass is kind of the UK's attempt at that kind of space age sci-fi horror film but doing it with a real quaint Britishness about it that I really, really love. I love the look of the old fashioned countryside shots in this film. And I just like all the scenes of kind of the stiff upper lip British actors converging in like the laboratories and things like that. So in this one, the, uh, the scientist that comes back uh, after the, the alien creature takes over the spacecraft He's taken to like a local hospital, but things are kind of changing with him physically. And uh, he starts to have like the alien plant growth thing on his arm, which is pretty scary actually. And quite distressing to see this guy sort of go through this transformation and not know what's happening to him and his body. It's really well done and very effective. And then I just like all the sort of the 1950s sci-fi tropes and things that go on in this movie all the time, like I say, just having this kind of wonderful Britishness about them. So the Quatermass experiment for me, it's, it's just a great example of 1950s sci-fi horror. It's got a really good mixture of both kind of the space age aspects, the horror side of it with the body transformation. And then there's a really cool kind of alien creature that comes out at the end. So there's a good payoff there in terms of the creature feature aspects of this. Uh, directed by Val Luton, who's always uh, going to bring a quality film of this kind from this era. So yeah, if you haven't seen the first Quatermass Experiment, definitely check it out. It's a wonderful film to watch. And as I say, one that kind of paved the way for numerous sci-fi and sci-fi horror films that came after it. So after the success of the Quatermass Experiment, we have Quatermass 2 from 1957. A really good sequel to the original movie. This one sees Brian Dunleavy reprise his role as Professor Quatermass 
which makes him the person to have played Quatermass the most on screen, despite Nigel Neal not being a fan of him playing the character. And this one's a really interesting movie. I really like this one. And it kind of, it drops a lot of the space age aspects and kind of focuses on sort of paranoia and government conspiracy and that kind of thing. It's really interesting. So in this one, Brian Donlevy and his colleague, they, they discover that meteorites are landing in the English countryside in a specific spot. And upon investigation, find a mysterious government complex that they're not quite sure what's going on there, but something mysterious is afoot. And it's one of those movies where kind of Professor Quatermass is trying to get to the bottom of it. He's talking to a lot of different people, but you're never quite sure who's on his side and who's not. Makes for some very compelling viewing. Now, it still goes down the science fiction route. There's a alien threat that's afoot uh, as part of the factory. And there's a really good shot because they're producing like this weird gelatinous dark material. And there's a scene when one of Quatermass's colleagues gets a bit too close for comfort and becomes covered in this horrible liquid element and comes running down the stairs sort of screaming and uh, in, a, in a really kind of strong, quite distressing scene. It's really well done. Uh, one of my favourite scenes in the movie. Now, there's some really recognisable British faces in this movie. Most notably, Sid James, who is most famous for his kind of comedy roles and the carry-on movies. In this film, he plays it straight as an investigative journalist and is really good in the role. It's really interesting to see him in this one. But Quatermass 2 is a great continuation from the first movie. Like I say, it kind of it's, it steps it up a bit differently. It retains a lot of the sci-fi charm and the Britishness that the first one had, but goes down this route of kind of government conspiracy and not knowing who's who and makes for a really good, very compelling viewing experience. And you get kind of the cool alien threat in this one as well. So yeah, Quatermass 2, solid sequel to the first one. If you've seen that one, definitely check out the second one. And then we come to the third movie, Quatermass and the Pit from 1967. Excellent movie as well. This one takes place in a London underground station where if you look closely you can see numerous posters for Hammer Horror movies. But they're doing some construction and the workers come across what they initially think is a World War II uh, bomb or device or something. So the police and the army get called in, uh, as does Professor Quatermass. Um, but it turns out that it's uh, it's actually something from another world. Now, Professor Quatermass in this movie is played by Andrew Keir, who does a fantastic job in the role and owns it like he's always played this professor. It's hard to pick a favourite, actually, between Andrew Keir and uh, Brian Don Levy, uh, which just goes to show you how good both of those actors were in this role. But he's on the case on this one, looking into it. And at first it plays out like a really good kind of investigative science fiction movie where they're trying to work out what this device is and where it comes from. Uh, but later on in the movie they get it open and find that it's home to these kind of locust looking aliens. Which to be fair look like kind of cheap BBC monsters from, from a cheap episode of Doctor Who. Um, but still look really cool. I love that they went with this insectoid looking creature for the aliens and they get them out and do some experimenting on them i don't want to give too much away but of course it's quatermass so you know there's an alien threat on some level within this movie but this is just a really good kind of more contemporary hammer horror movie like i say taking place in this london underground setting which worked really well uh, and with andrew keir trying to trying to look into it and uh, just a really fun film to watch. In fact, director Roy Ward Baker did go on record of saying that this is one of the most fun experiences that he had and uh, one of the movies that he held most dear uh, to him, which is really nice to, to know. And as I say, it does come across as a really kind of wonderful film to watch. I really enjoy it. So yeah, Quatermass and the Pit, a really good sequel, wrapping up three excellent sci-fi horror films. So there you go, guys. That's my little take on the three 
Quatermass movies. Like I say, three excellent sci-fi horrors. Very inspirational. Really wonderful films to watch. Kind of underrated at the same time as well. So let me know what you think about these movies. Do you like them? Do you have a favourite? Let me know. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on these. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.